So you have sine squared of theta equals sine of theta. Now, this is a problem that I see students make common mistakes on time and time again. So what I want to do is show you some of the common mistakes that I see students make so you don't make those same mistakes, as well as how you want to look at this problem and approach it so therefore you can solve it correctly. Now, in this problem, I will go ahead and find all of the solutions as well as the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. But the first thing I want to do is address the mistakes that I see students make. So the first mistake that I do not want you to do, but I can definitely understand that students think about when we have a sign on both sides, it might be very tempting to just say, well, I could divide by a sign of both sides that will eliminate the sign on the right hand side. Now, the problem with this is you just went from an equation that was a quadratic, me and the fundamental theorem of algebra, it's going to have two solutions to now just being a linear equation, meaning it's going to have one solution. This is actually a solution to this equation. But the problem is by dividing a sine of theta and reducing the power to the equation, we actually left off another solution. So please be very careful when you are dividing by trigonometric functions. We don't want to reduce the power of the equation. The next mistake that two students make is actually not a bad mistake as far as their attempt, because using trigonometric identities can be confusing. And one of the things that I commonly tell my students is whenever you see something squared, think of your Pythagorean identities. So immediately what they want to do is go ahead and convert sine squared into cosines. Now, effectively, there's nothing really wrong what they did with this problem. Now we're trying to solve an equation where we have two different trigonometric functions, and that's just not going to be ideal. What we're going to want to do is solve using the same trigonometric function. In this case, it's already written signs, so we're going to want to keep it in that. If we can't do this mistake and we can't do this mistake, what exactly can we do? Well, I want to again go back through and think about this in terms of like variables. If I had an x squared equals x, we wouldn't divide by an x on both sides, right? Or would we really want to transform the x squared? What we're simply going to want to do is when we have a quadratic, we're going to want to get the, all the variables to the same side. So I get an x squared minus x equals zero. And now I can use factoring to rewrite this as a product. Because remember, when you have a product, you can now use the zero product property. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, so now you see we have a sine squared of theta minus a sine of theta. Again, we cannot subtract these. They're not like terms, right? This is a quadratic and this is a linear term. Um, however, what we can recognize is that they both have a sine of theta in common, right? Just like these have an x in common, we can factor out the x to be left with an x times x minus one is equal to zero. Well, this is the exact same case. Remember that the sine squared of theta can be rewritten as a sine of theta quantity squared minus a sine of theta equals zero. So now I have a common sign. So I can factor out my sine of theta. And again, that's gonna just gonna be multiplied by by an extra sine of theta minus one is equal to zero. Now again, whenever you have the product equal to zero, now you can set each of these factors equal to zero. So I have a sine of theta equal to zero and I have a sine of theta minus one is equal to zero, which again goes back to this original equation that I had here, right? Which is a sine of theta equals one. So you can see how this one did give us the solution, but it left off the sine of theta equals zero. That's why it's a very important mistake to watch out for. Now to solve these equations, what we have to do is understand the angle that's going to produce these results. Remember, both these equations say the sine of what angle equals zero and the sine of what angle equals one. Now, the easiest way to understand these angles is going to be looking at the y coordinates using the unit circle because zero and one are both coordinate values on our unit circle. So if I draw a quick little unit circle, I can recognize the y coordinate is going to be one at this angle, which is zero comma one, as well as the y coordinate is going to be zero at this angle, as well as at this angle. Now, I just need to figure out what these angles are if I want to find the solutions between zero and two pi. So again, when you're trying to find the solutions on an interval of zero to two pi, that's basically just just finding the solutions that are on the unit circle. So when we're looking at the interval of zero to two pi, usually zero is going to be included and then two pi is going to be not included. So if we look at these solutions, we have the first point, which is really going to be at zero radians. The next solution here, as I see, is going to be pi because all the way around would be two pi, right? So halfway around a circle is going to be pi. And then you can see here, this angle is half of that, which would be a pi halves. So if we're looking for the solutions on zero to two pi, we'll have a zero, pi halves, and pi. What about if we want to find all of the solutions? That's going to be from negative infinity to infinity. Basically, there's going to be no restriction. I can keep on finding the angle where sine of theta is in equal to zero and sine of theta is equal to one. Now remember the sine graph, that's going to continue its pattern indefinitely. So the best way I like to understand this is just to add two pi to each or every one of these angles. Because if this is a solution, if I just add two pi, that takes me back to the exact same angle, right? The sine of that angle, which in this case would be four pi is equal to zero. You can also go in the negative direction, subtracting two pi. If I did the sine of negative two pi, which would be in the negative direction, I would still get a zero. So therefore to write all of the intervals of zero and 2 pi, I could just write 0 plus 2 pi n, where n represents a positive or a negative number. Writing 2 pi n is not going to be the most efficient way to write all of our solutions. What I want you to also recognize is the distance between 0 and pi is just pi. And if I keep on adding or subtracting pi, I'm going to keep on bouncing between these two solutions. So therefore, I can effectively just write theta is equal to a pi n is going to satisfy both of these solutions with one equation because n represents any integer. Now for my second solution, which is at pi halves, there's no interval that I can keep on 
adding. If I could add pi halves, that would take me to pi. But if I added pi halves again, then that's going to take me to three pi over two, which is not a solution. The only thing I can do for this solution is I'm going to have to keep on adding a two pi n to it. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that's how you find the solutions on zero to two pi or all the solutions. And it's very important to make sure you recognize when you need to factor because we don't want to lose a solution or always get stuck with the identities. I hope this video was helpful. If you want more examples or resources, go and check out my examples and resources down below for additional help or check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.